Okay, we have to. We have to fix the hair. Is that better? <laughs> Hey everybody, thank you so much for clicking on this video. Um, I won't lie to you, I just finished teaching a class, which is why I'm pretty sweaty. I haven't showered in two days, and um, I'm a little sick. So cheers, we're not feeling great, but this is part of my job, and I have to show up and actually film stuff. Last month I went on Instagram and I asked you guys to give me an opinion in the fitness industry. It was something like that. It didn't need to necessarily be your opinion, but maybe just something that like floats around in the abyss. And I am gonna tell you whether I agree or disagree with it. Now when I've done videos like this in the past, they've become a little long-winded. So to stay away from that, I am giving myself a 30 second time limit. This should be interesting. So I'm gonna have my timer, right down here and then we'll pop one up on the screen as well. I'm probably not going to get to comment on every single one of these today, but I'm going to do the best that I can with the time that I have. We do have a very busy Friday. Let's jump on in. First question, compound lifts give enough core training. Timer starts. Okay, I'm going to say as a general statement, I disagree only because everybody is a little bit different. Somebody who is brand new to lifting might need help finding those anti-extension muscles, might need help understanding how to resist rotation in the trunk. So those people might benefit from a little bit more compact or those but those people might benefit a little bit more from isolated core training but people who are more experienced might not need as enough maybe just a little bit in the warm up oh i forgot to mention too i'm trying not to edit any of this so you know i only took 30 seconds um you're going to get a behind the scenes of how I can't talk. <laughs> Next, rest days are needed to recover and recharge. Agree. This is actually backed in all of our exercise science studies at this point. Exercise literally creates micro tears in your muscles. So to heal those tears and then like build and repair and gain more muscle, you need time to rest and recover. Yay, 17 seconds. That was not bad. You have to learn to love bland food to lose weight. Mm, disagree. Absolutely not. Um, there's actually, okay, this, uh, 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 okay. So number one, food does not need to be bland. Sauces, spices, those are your best friends. If you think that losing weight equals eating bland chicken breast with broccoli and like white rice forever or brown rice, even worse, you're wrong. Oh, we have, okay, not a lot of time. Um, Jordan Syed actually just did a whole video about how he purposely spiked his blood sugar every single day for 30 days and still lost weight. So it is possible. You do not have to eat bland food. Oh, Oh, <laughs> just like to add on, you can eat whatever you want. It just comes down to being in a calorie deficit. And yes, obviously certain foods are going to make you feel a different way, but really it just comes down to a calorie deficit. Sorry, I went over. Okay, we won't do that again. I feel like filming like this is like making my heart rate go really high. Alcohol kills your gains and fat loss. As a broad statement, disagree, because like I just said in my overtime, it really does come in t to a calorie deficit in terms of like well, we're not just talking, what are we talking about? Fat loss, but then gains, like building muscle. Like it really just, just come down to how much, like it can kill your gains. It can kill your fat loss goals, but it doesn't necessarily, alcohol equals that. Um, it just comes down to moderation, but also remember that like alcohol literally has zero nutritional benefits. So something to think about. This one's funny. Sugar is the devil and carbs are the ugly twin. <laughs> okay, disagree. So sugar is... I mean, it's like everything in moderation, right? The poison is in the dose. And sugar is actually like carbs. Like carbs, when you absorb it into your system, is broken down into glucose or fructose or sucrose, whatever. And that is a sugar, right? And carbs are our body's main and preferred source of energy. So everything just comes down to the dosage that you're taking and how much you're eating of it. That was pretty good. <laughs> Next one. Burpees are useless and have no benefit. Okay, you're actually going to be surprised, but I'm going to say disagree only because this is a super broad statement. I am sure that there's people in the world who enjoy burpees, who have good mechanics in their squat jumps, in their push-ups, in their hip mobility, in their planks, that they can perform a burpee. And if that is something that they like to do for some cardio or for some calisthenics, like that's a great option. But for most people, I would say just make sure you're good at all of those things before you jump into burpees. Okay, we're getting better at this. We're getting the feel for talking quickly without breaks. It's important to stretch before a workout to correct muscle imbalances. Oh, there's so much to talk about here. Okay. I'm going to say broadly disagree. Number one, when I hear the word stretch, I think like passive stretching. And we actually don't want to do that before a workout because that's sending the wrong signal to our nervous system. That's saying like, hey, it's time to cool down. It's time to go to sleep. And we're creating a lot of length. Whereas we actually want to create tension in a strength workout. What you do want to do before a workout is movement prep. So mobility drills, making sure that underactive muscles, like maybe your glutes, or your core, or your back are nice and active. And we also want to make sure that, um, I don't have time. <laughs> 
The other thing I was going to say is that we want to make sure that we're not like making muscle imbalances like the bad thing. We're not robots. We're not always going to have completely balanced bodies side to side. So if it's not causing you issues or pain, it's probably fine. Sorry, I said I wasn't going to do that again, but I had to get my thoughts out. <laughs> Ab workouts are unnecessary. So I'm going to say I disagree to a point. If you have like a whole ab day in your workout split, I think it's a little redundant and I don't necessarily think it is 100% necessary, but if you like doing that or if you like doing like a little 10-minute ab blast, if that's something that makes you feel good, if that helps with your adherence to consistency to movement, I think that's fantastic. But is it like completely unnecessary? No. Be okay. I'm out of time and I, I guess you get it. <laughs> All right, this one is just a statement. Exercising with rheumatoid arthritis at 37. I agree that you can and you should. I think it's gonna come down to finding exercise and movement that works on your body. I will say this is fully outside of my scope of practice and my personal experience. If you want more insight into it, talk to a physical therapist, talk to your doctor. Um, I would also recommend looking at Margaret Elizabeth's channel. She is a certified Pilates instructor. I've had her on my channel before, but she does also have rheumatoid arthritis. I'm like 99% sure, but that's why she does mostly Pilates training. So so she has a lot more insight that she can give you. I'm just realizing that if you're not like a native English speaker, this is probably way too fast for you. I think you can slow it down, like put me on 0.5. Do cat cows even work? They seem pointless as a stretch. Ooh. Um, so I disagree that they're pointless as a stretch. Cat cows are one of my favorite ways to start any day, any type of workout. So if we think about what the spine does, the spine uh, flexes, it extends, it rotates, it laterally bends and extends. So we want to make sure that we have that movement before we jump into a workout. So having all of that range of motion through your cat cow and really taking your time is really important. Did that answer the question? <laughs> Gut balancing products are awful and can be harmful. Mm, agree. The supplement world is the wild west. Keep in mind, nothing is regulated with supplements. Um, anything that is branded as gut health is more than likely bullshit, is more than likely completely stretching the truth. Um, the only person that you should go to for gut health is a doctor that specializes in your, your GI. That's it. Oh, or an RD, they can help too. Oh, this one's hard. Okay, we're just gonna try functional patterns course. So I'm gonna pop up what that is right here, but oh, okay, I agree with the, the, the functional patterns principle to a point. Um, I think they have a lot of great insight into like moving the whole body as a unit, into utilizing rotation. I think there's a lot of stuff that they do that's awesome. I, and I, I actually used to train at a gym that was all functional patterns. Um, I will say that I think a lot of their stuff is very fear mongery when it comes to like nutrition. So I don't support that part of it, but I do love their movement stuff. People overestimate the impact of metabolic adaptation. I 100% agree. We have to remember that metabolic adaptation, we always think of it as like, oh, I eat too little for too long and then my metabolism slows way down. Or like, oh, I'm too stressed or whatever, my metabolism slows right down. Metabolic adaptation happens every single day. Your metabolism is all of the processes in your entire body and it is always adapting to your environment, to your stress, to your nutrition, to your muscle, to your bone density. So there's a lot more than just like, oh, my metabolism crashed. I don't know if that answered the question, but um, people just use it as fear-mongering, in my opinion. <laughs> Depression triggers old injuries. I'm gonna like just say I don't really know. Uh, what I do disagree with that I see a lot of is like these people being like stored trauma is your body holding on to fat, and then once you get rid of that trauma, you'll release your fat. Like. I don't vibe with that. That's very like inside every fat person is a skinny person. I think there's a lot to be said about like mental illness, but then like people put a lot of blame on that, on weight. I don't know. I'm just going to say I don't know and call it a day. <laughs> Reviewing YouTube workouts. I agree, but like agree with this concept of doing that. But I think that you have to have a bigger purpose. This is something that I have learned over the years. I feel like when I first started my YouTube page, it was just like, let me get subscribers no matter what. And everyone like loves a snarky review, but it wasn't really attracting the type of people that I wanted. And it was just like unnecessary drama. So now if I do do a review, a review of something, I have to have a bigger purpose, whether it's ethics, whether it's marketing, whatever. Running is overrated. Oh, there's so much to unpack here. Okay. So like, I do agree. 
Um, but that's kind of more for me. Like, I think it's overrated because I don't like it. But I also think there's a part of this where, like, a lot of people don't walk very well, don't have good gait. Like, they don't... So I just don't think that you should be taking that and, like, running right away. I think a lot of people jump to running before they even look at how they walk, how they jump, how they lunge. So, yeah, I think it's a little overrated. You are what you eat. Mmm. Disagree. It's giving, like, 2002 print Pinterest, right? Like, you're not a carrot. You're not a donut. You're not, like, a, a Mediterranean bowl. Like, your food impacts your life, but, like, it doesn't define you. That was good. <laughs> oh, okay, so the other side of it. You have to stretch after every workout. Disagree. Um, if you like doing it and it makes you feel good and it's relaxing and it like calms your nervous system, that's great. And that's actually the most benefit that we've seen. Like a lot of times that static stretching, that time after your workout can be very calming to your nervous system. But aside from that, there's not a lot of benefits in terms of like decreasing soreness, in terms of increasing gains. If anything, we want to kind of stay away from this idea that we always need to get all of the tension out of our muscles because we actually lack a lot of muscle tension as a society. Boom. That was good. Okay. We're going to try our best to fit this one in 30 seconds, but this one like... Ooh. Okay. While size does not equal health, we cannot blindly ignore risks of having extra weight. Okay. Agree, but you can literally say that about anything. Like... You can say this about having too little weight. You can say this about driving a car. You can say this about, you know, competing in Olympic sports. Like, you can kind of say this about anything. And I think that we have to remember, too, that, like, we know the risks. Like, people know the risks. People, okay, you know what? I'm going over. <laughs> I want to get this out eloquently, so I want to actually take my time and edit this nicely because I think it's important. There are risks with everything. So when we just say, like, we can't ignore the fact that having extra weight is risky, like, do you think people don't know? And why don't we look at the individual? Because it's not always, like, X amount of extra weight, which, like, define what that is because we've already learned that BMI is, like, not super helpful. We already know the risks of that, but we also have the tools to look at things like our blood pressure, like our cholesterol, like our fat mass on the body, like our resting heart rate. Like, why don't we also look at these things rather than just this person has extra weight, whatever that means. Let's say they're unhealthy. Let's make sure they know the risks of that. I think we need to have a little more empathy for people and understanding maybe why they've gotten to this place if they are in an unhealthy place and have extra weight. Mental health plays a huge part in it. Access to nutritious options. Honestly, just education about what nutritious options are. The finances to support having nutritious options. The time to actually go grocery shopping for nutritious options. Affordable health insurance. If you do actually get yourself to a doctor not feeling shamed and always having your weight being pointed out as the first thing of what's potentially wrong with why ever you came in. Again, I think we all know the risks of having this extra weight. We're putting it in air quotes because I, I don't think there's necessarily a great way to just define that because every person is different. Also weight. We're not talking fat mass. We're not talking bone density. We're not talking muscle mass. Like that's just everything. So I don't think that's a good way to define it. Instead of harping on this and just saying like, there are risks and this is dangerous and blah, blah, blah. Again, you can say that about anything. And I think the more helpful approach is to educate people, inform people, and also vote people into public office who also have this mindset that everyone deserves to be healthy without going bankrupt. I think that's a good place to end the video. That was fun and stressful. I feel like my heart rate is like very high. If there is anything in this video that you want elaborated on, maybe you think deserves like a whole video to itself that I haven't had already, please let me know down in the comments. Thank you for dealing with, I mean, I don't look bad. I just, you know, we're casual today because we're not feeling great. So thank you for dealing with that. Any questions as always, leave them below. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out and I will see you all in the next one.